Hello everyone, Winejoy here and welcome back to Thrones of Britannia. In the last episode I declared war on the Galgolden now that my war of the Ognea is coming to an end slowly but surely. And speaking of the Ognea, if we pop up towards, where is it, here? My main army under the command of my faction leader, Eric. The Sounders of the Yalahorn? Yeah. That's right. They have completed their mission of taking all the southern Oknean territories that they originally stolen from the Cern. So now that they're done, I'm going to be sending them back down south. Now, I have been thinking about sending them this way, as you can see from the path, to go towards the Skalgodan province here. But the thing is, they're not going to get there by the time this western ass army is going to arrive. So what I'm thinking is to actually send them down south, because at the end of the last episode, I noticed this. As a Galgodan army attacking Govan and obviously pushing back now to recapture the land that that Westernas army has taken. Now, depending on which direction this army takes, it could either carry on this way, which works out for me because it will weaken the army ready for me to go over and take the deal with them and then take their land, or they will get defeated by Westernas, but they're going to be basically marching along here. This will allow me to actually take the province of Stratklut away from them. So I'm going to be ordering the army instead to be marching towards Swef Berlin. It's still going to take a number of turns to get there, but it will get there sooner rather than later. With that army done, the next thing that's going to be happening is my other army, the, what's the thing, Force Hand Thunder? No, Force Hammer? Whereabouts are they? It's my army led by my character's younger son, Harkon, who defeated that army including their faction leader of the Oknea here, and it's going to be the main army that's going to be dealing with them further up north. Now, I'm going to hire a couple of units for these guys before we move on, not too many. I don't want to spend too much money, although this will become a second main force over time. I'm just going to ask for a couple of units, that should do the job quite nicely. Still gives me a fair bit of money to play with and it should deal with any forces that the Ognea rise. So let's put these guys back into March and we're going to be just getting them to come straight up to here. Now how long is it going to take? It's going to take at least five turns. Yeah, one, two, three, four, say five turns. If I ask them to come this way, we'd actually get there a lot more quickly. But I don't know where they're actually sort of set off. Hmm, I might ask them to just go along this way. Yeah, uh, we'll just get them to go long land. It's going to work out roughly the same no matter which direction they take. So they'll come along here. They'll take the opportunity to replenish as we go along. Let's in fact give a couple of them some extra arm weapons and armor. And it still gives me a little bit of cash to spend with. So that's that one. The other army I remember doing is I had a small little army. There's it? The Unbreakable Wall. Now these guys are just going to be setting off in order to take this little minor settlement of Cal Detain, because this is the one one I need in order to complete Druam Alban. Now something I did notice is it's going to take three turns if I tell them to go and attack it by land, but given the movement range by sea, can we? And we sh it's a port settlement. We can do this and get it done a turn more quickly. So we'll do that. Order it to be done. That's basically everything we needed to do this turn. Now, I do have a little bit of cash left over. Is there anything I want to spend it on upgrading or anything like that? There was that little minor settlement with here. Can I afford to convert this? Not quite. I'm a little bit out. No worries. I think that's everything we can do. Let's go ahead and end the turn. I have noticed as well my little war fever score is a minus one and I imagine it's going down right now. We've been at war for a number of turns now and the way it works is that eventually your people get tired of being at war. So I want to try and finish things off with the Gal Golden as quickly as I can as well as the Oknea. Now the Oknea will be fairly done, it's just a matter of getting my troops over there. Ooh, excuse me. But with the Gal Golden I think we're going to have a bit of a problem because if I remember correctly, wasn't Dublin allied with them and as a result I'm at war with them. It's going to be a little bit far for me to try and deal with them necessarily because of the distance involved. Let's see, it doesn't popped up yet. Am I just remembering it wrong or are we actually at war with the Dublin? Huh, maybe I remembered it wrong. Oh well. If, we're, if that's not the case, it's made things a bit more easier. So it's a worthy bride for Cormac. So we've got Kristen who is a noble, reduces his loyalty but improves his... Nah, we're going to do this. 
I don't mind the fact that they're married necessarily, but his loyalty is quite low anyway. And given that, it's just going to do the complete opposite of what I want to happen. So let's just use some influence to do that. And it looks like we've got some damaged buildings as well. Whereabouts is this in Skoan? Okay. That's okay, we can manage this. Well, I'll tell you what though, actually. <laughs> let's cancel this. Something I did look up at the end of the last episode was this. Uh, the blacksmith does give me a little bit of extra thing with industry and with the armor and what have you. But because I've got a lot of these industry villages here, something I think might make a better alternative is if I dismantle this and actually build a toolmaker there. Because if I remember correctly when I, when I looked it up last time, it gives me something like the same amount of industry bonus, 10%. This one's damaged, remember? But it also allows me to improve the amount of resources that these make. So I'll be making more timber and more copper as a result, which will also then lead to having more money coming in from trade. So we'll make sure to build that next turn. Alright, what else have we got? That's getting repaired, of course. Alright, Ketil, you've gone up in rank. Okay, what can we give you? You're pretty loyal and reasonably influential, so I don't have to give you a priest. Maybe I might as well just give you another scribe, maybe? Maybe go for something else. I mean, what else would these do? Quartermaster... I mean, that could be fairly useful. I can't remember which... What governorship do you have? Ah, it doesn't matter. I'll go for Forger. That little bit of extra food can never do any harm. So we'll do that. And who else we've got? Forgear. You're patient, trustworthy, a negotiator, a miser. Let's give you a scribe and improve that. There we go. Sorted. Still got a nice bit of cash left over, so we'll probably spend on something. In fact, we've got that place I needed to upgrade. I mean, convert over, so let's do that straight away. There we go, it takes six turns. It's not big improvements, but I'll have it converted over to my own building chain as much as I can. So, in fact, everyone should be moving in the direction they need to go. You guys are going to be moving over there next turn. You guys are continuing on your way up there. You guys are moving towards where you need to go. That's basically everything I need to do this turn. It's going very quickly. Let me just check the diplomacy. I want to... Yes, I'm actually a war with Dublin. Dublin's actually not doing too well for themselves. They've got this little island here. It's not even a big province. It's just these two regions, it seems. And they've got this one territory here. So they've lost... Where is their home base? I have no idea where do they start off. In any case, it looks like ah, is it? Settlement Dublin, right? So they've actually lost their original province to Gwynedd. Huh. Interesting. So it means once we've become king of the north, it might be a thing to go up against the Welsh, so we can actually take that territory that I need for a kingdom victory. But saying that, now could be a good opportunity just to briefly go over something I've been thinking about for a little while now. I'm thinking that in a f I'll make a bigger video about this and actually talk about it in detail, but needless to say, I'm thinking in a few weeks to take a little bit of a break from YouTube. Not long, about a month or something, and to do it in a few weeks' time. Just because, well, I kind of want to have a think about what direction I want to take my vi YouTube channel in terms of what content I actually want to do and now that I'm a few years into it and to see how I'm going to be about creating said content. As an example, I do want to do a lot more with narrative let's plays and role plays. It's something I've been going on and on about wanting to do and I've never actually got around to doing the motivation. Normally because I find it's I've got these series going already and then when do I fit it in? Things like that, so I'm going to have a look to see what I can do about it. But like I said, I'll be making a bigger video about it at some point in the near future. But it will be discussed and what will happen and all that then. So we'll talk about it then. Anyway, so back to my turn. We've got unseasonal conditions in Jerome Alban. I don't know what's going on here. Let's have a look. We've got a late autumn. That's good. Healthy harvest, mild temperatures, improving public order. Unit morale, food, and 20% from the marketplace. Cool. Okay, you're going off down here now to attack Keldate. Let's just go ahead and do that. We can sacrifice a nice sum of money. 
Nah, we're not just going to occupy us. Because I'm taking it for myself, I have a feeling that if I sack it, it's basically going to have to spend that money again then in order to repair the damage. So I might as well just keep it. And it looks like we'll make the money within a couple of turns anyway. So there we go. We've now got an iron mine and a fishing jetty to play with. Nice. Facts. You've now gone up in rank. Let me see. You're actually pretty good, although you are mad. <laughs> With a world that's unpredictable, a little eccentricity isn't necessarily a bad thing. and could even mark the difference between audacious victory and ignominious defeat. It gives me actually 10% charge bonus for all my units. That's very good. And uh, let's pop you up and give you a level quartermaster. Get that little bit of extra campaign movement going. We'll probably have to pop up Bard in order to give you zeal as well. Just because that extra zeal is going to come in use. Increase my commander's aura, my public order, and people's morale. Very good bonuses. So there we go. Caldertain is now under my control and I have the entire province under the wall of the Sudrea. Sounds the Galahorn, you're continuing to make your way over. Uh, get there in three turns. I'm not sure how long we're, if we're going to get there in time. It depends which direction this army is going to go, the wolves. What I hope they do is to try and actually stop this army from doing what they're doing over here. So it will require them to march over to do an at and fight them, which is the ideal situation. What will, might happen though is that they may decide to come back here. These regions of mine are a lot more closer, and because we are at war with them, they're going to be wanting to go after me at some point. So they may go after these for the more isolated minor settlements rather than try and prevent their main region from being captured. But we'll just have to wait and see what's going to happen. At least we're going to get over there a little bit more quickly. Get there at least two turns. Hopefully that's going to be enough time. Okay. Four's hammer. You'll continue on your way. Smash them. Yeah, you'll get there eventually. It's fine. Okay, what technology are we going to do next? So we did finish off defensive tactics, which now unlocks armored defenders. Better arms and armor used to their greatest effect to prove any army's capacity to defend itself. Spreading the word that we need our superiorly equipped warriors will bring them forth to take their place in our battle ranks. So this actually gives me the recruitment option for Eastman Champions and upgrades my Eastman Axemen to Axe Warriors. That's tempting. I mean, it gives me a new sword unit and gives me a axe unit as well. A better axe unit. What can we do instead? Any other options? We can go for some more spearmen. I mean, what do these replace? Eastman Warband. Now nah, we've got levies, haven't we? I don't think that's going to make much of a difference. Siege techniques, I don't particularly need that right now. Light to, uh, siege engines seem to do the job just as well for me. We can't go for that. Why don't we start working on our bodyguards? We need to attack another army two more times. Okay. Ooh, anything for my civil tech? Extra supplies? Nah. Minus 10% construction cost for villages and secondary slot buildings. Specialized builders, with other wide expertise, erecting buildings can quickly become costly and time-consuming. Assigned, assigned and dedicated builders to all our settlements will result in cheaper and more efficient construction methods. That could be quite useful for because it's villages, and if I'm guessing right for secondary slot buildings, that might include major settlements. So 10% discount on all buildings, that could be worth 4 turns of research. So we do that and we'll focus again on military tech next time. Alright, now that we've got that, is what can we spend our money on? I right, would like to try and upgrade some of the major settlements up to full strength. Let's see. How much is it going to cost me to get this? 3,272, that's quite a bit. We've got everything else up to level 2 at least. Let's go for that one. May as well, we've got the time. Hmm. So, but yeah, carrying on with what I was saying a minute ago. So what I was thinking is, one of the things I might be, might be end up doing is finishing some of the series I want to do, because I might be changing a few things about the channel. So what I will probably do is give it a couple of weeks. So a lot of the campaigns and Let's Plays I'm doing at the moment can come to sort of a natural conclusion, so to speak, even if it isn't actually the complete campaign. So as an example for this campaign, it might work if I made it so 
Eric becomes king of the north, that's sort of the end of the campaign as far as it needs to go. It could be something, and I might come back to it after I've taken my month off. It might be something, I might decide to do something else instead. It's just something I want to think about. Same with like the Wales campaign for Medieval 2. Conquering Ireland could do as a natural end point at that point, because then the Welsh have managed to conquer Hoiga and, um, oh crap, I can't even remember what this island is in Welsh. Basically, we managed to conquer two nations and think Scotland and the Norwegians could be left alone then. I don't know, I'll think about it, and like I said, I'll be making a video once I've sort of made my decision about what I'm planning to do. But just to give you guys a bit of a heads up. Alright, let's have a look at you. Uh, sh the problem is, you're, go you're not going to get there in time for Swift Berlin, are you? No, because they're coming over here, they're going to attack that next turn. There's no point in me trying to think, and if I try and foot march it down here... Yeah, what we'll do is this. We need to move 20... we can move at least 25%. I mean 50% if we're going to go into fortification. So if we can move here, take a few hits to attrition, do this to get those numbers back. And then next turn we'll still be able to make it to Dunblan, even if we lose the uh, village of Swift Berlin for the moment. We can then go after that army and from this point. And we'll keep Dunblan. Facts. Is it worth spending some money to upgrade that? Nah, there's no need. See this one. Here it is. 15%. That could work out. Anything else? Right. Let's do that one. Get a little bit more cash coming in. Now something I did notice is up here... The Ognea have started to sail off. Don't know which direction they're going to take. It looks like they're coming out this way. Although I don't know. If It may be coming after one of my minor settlements. So what I'm going to have to do is allow... Um, Harkin to continue marching towards Lafan. It's no real need for me to tell him to change his direction now at this point. Even if we're taking a couple of attrition along the way. We'll keep an eye on that Oak Nea force and see which direction they're going to be moving. And if they are moving towards one of the minor settlements on the coast, like Toughness, for example. I don't know. It looks like it's heading the other way, so it's probably one of the other ones along the coast. But we'll make sure then to recruit a general, get a couple of units there, so I have to dissuade them not to try and land there. Or we'll have to just maybe go out and attack them directly. They've only got the one unit in there, which is their bodyguard. So it should be fairly easy pickings for us. We'll, we'll see which direction they're going to go afterwards. Now they took Swef Berlin. That was to be expected, to be honest. So we're not too concerned about that. What we'll do now is move the army up now towards Dunblan. War fever's decreased. This is pretty expected. You can rely on us. Two more turns. Continue on your way. Gizli, you've now gone up in rank, okay. Let's, let's give you an extra level of zeal. Not that it's done much. Does it not boost it up anymore? Next time, okay. Alright, let's have a look see. So we had rack up here. Yeah, this one's definitely heading towards one or the other. Now it could be going after toughness or it could be after two and in. Can't go after any of the other ones without at least another turn moving. Now, it looks like it will probably go for toughness, so what I'll do is let's have a look. Let's pick a decent enough general. They're exactly the same with their starting traits, so it doesn't make any difference to me. Let's hire Griffidia. You're a little bit younger, you should do the job. You're actually not that loyal. Surprise, surprise. A lot of my characters always start off unloyal for me. In fact, that's pretty low. I don't want to actually spend any money though. We'll try and improve his loyalty. It doesn't seem like much of a use to me. What we'll do is let's pop you on here for the moment. And we'll just add a couple of cheap units. Some Eastern Warband should do the job. And that'll be it. It's not planned for much. They just make it so we have the numbers. So if they do try and come at us, I mean, we can't see what their bodyguard's like and their size, but it's probably going to be a bit better than what we've got. So we'll just keep it there for the moment, see if we can persuade them not to go at this. Uh, Unbreakable Wall, which direction are you going? should be there already. 
Oh yeah, we've taken this. What are we going to do with you? Let's see, they've taken doing that. What I will do, I'm actually going to... Let's have you come to attack here. We're not going to actually capture the settlement this time. We're just going to sack it and get a nice bit of loot from them. We may come back later in order to capture it, but for now, we might as well just go there for the extra monies. Sounds of the Yellowhorn, you can now come out of this. Hmm. We can actually start the attack against them straight away. It's going to be fairly balanced, us against them. And we've got another 10 minutes. Let's do a battle. Let's do this. Why not? Alright. Let's see. Balance bar is slightly in my favor. It's not going to be any... I mean, we could actually just lay the, uh, them to siege. Wait for them to... Yeah, we might as well just fight it. So let's have a quick look and see what they've got. So they've got these Eastman fighters, we've got um, warders, I think our troops are the superior ones, although they've got a bit of experience. They've got hunters, we've got archers, I think theirs might be slightly better than mine. To be honest, it's going to be a little bit of a, a toughie, I think. It's fairly equal in terms of numbers and troops. I think the only thing that's going to go in our favour is the fact that my general is better than theirs. Fairly equal numbers. Let's... Garrison. Yep, let's fight it. What's the worst that can happen, eh? <laughs> Alright. Now, this is going to be the first minor settlement battle we've actually had in this campaign. So I'm going to be interested to see what it's like, because I know... Like, for example, in Rome 2 and some of the other ones, you do get the minor settlements to fight in, but they're not really a big deal. But, ooh, we do have some. I had a look, okay, so the enemy's going to be deploying in it. That makes sense. I don't know. I'll, I'll be interested to see what it actually looks like, because this actually looks like a little village, and we're fighting as part of it. But at the same time, it's not like a major part of the battlefield, it looks like. It's going to be a pretty nice one to do. Hmm. I think, we, yeah, we do have more, we have more melee infantry, so we should try and use that to our advantage. We'll get them pinned up, we'll attack them then, we'll rely on our archers to try and do some damage, although they do have a skirmishing advantage. Our horsemen are, we've got more melee horsemen, but they do have skirmishing cav, so we have to be a little bit careful about our flanks, but we'll be okay, I'm sure. Let's do this. I have no idea where the enemy is, so we're going to deploy more in this open area here and try and use the uh, trees to the side to our advantage as much as possible. Ready. Let's have Norse warriors. You guys should be fairly okay when it comes to flanking, so I don't know. Let me see. Let's put you guys along here. Alright. You guys can come here. You can take advantage of the unpassable terrain there. You guys can form up here then as well. All my, all you guys can form up in the center line. They're ready to move, charge forward. Eric, you can form up behind them. Archers, let's deploy you in the front line here. Not gonna actually do much, I'd imagine. We we'll just have them charge forward, do some, hit some units, and go from there. You guys then can stay in the woodlands here. Right? Can you not hide here? There we go. Perfect. Your light melee infantry are useful Thank for flanking you. the enemy, attacking their missile infantry. I know about how to use my light melee infantry. Thank State you. Okay. Archers. Archers, we're gonna have you come forward slightly so we can balance them out. Okay, let's start moving everyone out and then at this point. It will be done. Alright, you guys might as well stay in the trees. We'll be able to send them out quite quickly, given the fact they are cavalry. So we'll probably get them to try and come in on the flanks. What they've got over here? Scouts. Levy... Okay, so their horsemen are on this side. They haven't got any on this side? Yeah, they've got one unit of skirmishers. Okay. Lead spear into these herdmen. What we've got? Okay, spear here like we've got, but they've got a few more in their unit compared to me. Okay. My sword, yours guts. 
<laughs> right, let's do this. Let's continue moving forward slightly. Right. So they've kept their skirmishers and that to the rear of the line, so we should be able to do some shots against these frontline troops here. Now they do have sp uh, sh shields, so they're actually going to be a quite missile resilient, but we'll be okay. We can do a bit of hits, and if not, we can always try and attack the hunters and that in the back. I mean, their troops, yeah, they're... Yeah, we've got tier 1 levy bow infantry. Their hunters are superior elite bows. Okay, that's new axes, axes. Okay, we might use my archers then to focus fire on their skirmishing calf. My sword, your guts. Okay, let's have you guys Huntsman. spread out a little bit more. Quick in the pace. Like so. Where's the fight? Don't worry, there'll be one. Right. Looks like their hunters might have a slight range advantage as well, so they're going to be taking some shots against my troops in a second. In fact, we better move forward a bit just so we can actually engage with our own skirmish and cav skirmishes. There we go, you guys should start being able to fire now. Maybe not, slightly more. Yep, here they come. It's okay, there's only skirmishes, I don't mind. You guys should start firing now. Right. Let's see, you guys focus fire on their hunters. Right. Okay, you guys, let's get you in Shield Castle. Right. You guys focus fire on this unit of hunters. Taking a few hits, that's good. We might as well fight uh, it's, uh, their skirmishes as they're going to be a little more likely armoured in comparison. And the fact that we do outnumber them 4 to 1. Well, we did before they started taking shots at this unit. Okay. There we go, we to knock them down to half strength. Alright. Can we send these guys up slowly? Let's see, whereabouts are you guys? You're over here. It's probably not going to be able to do much, but we might as well move them forward just so they can get into position a little bit more. Actually, stop. They'll get there quickly enough. Okay, you guys, focus fire now on this unit of hunters. They'll probably come back. There's only seven of them left though, but they are... Oh no, they've actually broken. They are routed, it says they're shattered. Okay. Let's have a look. Hunters? Hunters, okay. Right, you're taking a few hits, aren't you? You're still in Shield Castle? Yes, you are. Okay, that's probably why skirmishers are really need to take three shots at them, is because they're focusing on my swordsman as well. Not the most ideal thing, because I'd rather not focus on my actual missile melee troops, but if we can at least kill some of them off, that will help out. I will admit, guys, not the most exciting thing watching the skirmishing fights going on between my, the units. But if we can get rid of these guys, it's going to help me out. Okay, you know what? Let's start making things a little bit more exciting, shall we? Alright. Okay, you guys can now focus fire on these. Alright, let's start engaging. So we're going to have the advantage going up against these units here, with at least my unit of Herdman. So let's have you guys start marching up towards here. You guys can come here. Alright, let's have you guys attack the front. Alright. Get some scouts. You guys there. Okay, Berserkers. Let's have you guys charge into these. 
here. Alright, what have we got here? Scouts. Okay, you guys, they're coming at my own thing. Okay, let's deal with this. Okay, you guys come around and attack these guys. You guys come around onto the flank. And we'll try and uh, attack them from two sides. This unit come in here. This unit come in here. King, let's have you guys move forward. You guys, let's take you and focus on the javelin then. Uh, let's have you taken out the scouts. Okay, you guys have now come over here. Good, you guys can now attack their flanks. Alright. How are these doing? Okay, you guys have won. Fantastic. Eastman Fighters or Warband? Let's have you guys go against the Warband over there. Okay, you guys are taking a few hits from there, but that's fine. Alright, General, let's have you uh, take on the scouts. Okay, if we've broken them on this flank, fantastic. Okay, you guys can now start fighting and engaging the troops over here. Alright, you guys focus fire on them. Okay, how are we doing here? Okay, they're running away, that's fine, we'll leave them to it. Archers, focus fire on killing these off. Have you guys finished off over here yet? No. In fact, there's only nine of them left and yet they still managed to hold on here. It's not what I want to see, but we'll make do of it. You're losing decisively. Right. You guys come over here. You guys focus fire over on this unit of troops here. Okay, how are you guys dealing with these uh, troops here? We've smashed their cavalry. Okay, let's get them after here now. Let's try and drive off their javelins as much as we can. Okay, you guys now, let's have you focus on this unit over here. The men have been routed. They are leaving the field. Alright, which unit's routed? Alright, cavalry's coming in. Okay, that's fine. You guys can focus fire over here and attack these. Eric, let's have you. No, let's have you guys come in on this flank. Alright, you guys are going after their javelins. Alright, Eastman fighters, you have starting to waver. Okay, let's see if we can help these out a bit. You guys focus on there. We've got another unit retreating. That's okay, that's okay, that's fine. Alright, Eric, let's have you guys come in to deal with the warband there. Axeman, we might as well get you coming over here to help out. Okay, how are you, my horseman, doing? Okay, dead general, fantastic. That's just what we want to hit see. So these guys should now be mounted in the center. What's left for me to fight? This. Okay, because it, because even though we attacked them and it's more or less a field battle, it was still a siege battle, so to speak. So we've managed to win this and kill off the entire army. We did okay. I mean, have a look here. Eric didn't actually kill anyone. That's fine. But everyone else did pretty good going for themselves, especially this unit of Axemen here. 112 kills. Very, very good. Archers didn't do too badly, despite the fact they were technically it was qu quantity over quality. So we take that, we didn't lose any units. We can start the replenishment next turn. Let's we'll just occupy this. Okay. So your fellow rulers begin to pay attention to you. Negotiation can bring in tributes as effectively as downright aggression, although the threat of military action remains a great motivator. War fever has now increased. Okay, I imagine because we have actually started to have a bit of an advantage now, things will be going in our favor a little bit. Alright. So what can we do here? We've got Outclut, 
which we're going to have to see about going after at some point. We've got Doom Dom now down there. And we've taken Swift Berlin back. Okay, what it might be time to do then is... Again, if we hire another general for here, it doesn't have to be a big deal, it just needs to pick this guy, what random bloke. Again, low loyalty. Alright, what we'll do, we'll have you guys coming over here now, you should get there, hopefully before this other unit does. If not, how long is it going to take for you guys to get over? About two turns as well. Okay, we'll have you guys stay in, in the... Get back in here. We'll have them stay in here. They'll get a little bit of a replenishment and then we'll have them go after Gravan next turn. Or next episode, I should say. Eric has gone up in rank. Let's give you another level of Quartermaster to help things out. Hmm. Okay. Alright. World Serpents. Let's see. Can we start? No, we'll keep you there for the moment. I forgot we haven't even ha finished the turn yet. Okay, let's end it. And after this end turn phase, we'll end the episode then as well. So, so far things are going pretty well in the campaign, I ha it must be said. We've defeated the Galgona main army, so their lands are pretty much ripe for us to take. We won't be focusing on the land that Restanas has started to take. Instead, we'll let them have that for the moment. And then we'll continue to take Strat Clut away f uh, from the Galgodan. So that will establish our more southern domains. Okay, you guys have obviously been not interested in going after me now, so you're heading that way. Okay, we'll just disband the troops that we recruited up in Tofness and get ready to, in order to defend another settlement from that force. War fever has decreased. Okay, a whole bunch of people are not happy. Let's just go through these quick. So you're unloyal. That's f fine. Okay, let me see. So you guys, you've basically done your job. Let's, I'll tell you what, come, come over here. Let's do this quick. Let's go over here. Let's kill this guy. Alright. We'll catch up with him, it's, I'm sure. You guys can do that. Anyway, let's end today's episode here. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And I hope you join me next time as we continue the war against the Galgodin in the hour-long special that comes with episode 10. But until then, goodbye for now.